Hi, everybody, and welcome. My name is Melanie Dizon. I'm the Director of Education at the Davis Finney Foundation, and I am here with Lisa Skandali. Uh, she's calling in from the Netherlands, and we're going to talk all about Parkinson's and therapy dogs. How are you doing, Lisa? Hello. Hi from the Netherlands. <laughs> Hi. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about who you are, um, your background, and you know how you got interested in this research and what you're, you're finding out? Sure. Uh, so I'm uh, from Greece originally. And um, I've always loved animals since I was little. I remember that I, we were going to the islands with my mother and I would find cats, you know, stray cats. And I had to pet all of them. And my mom was like, let's go, we are sightseeing. So, <laughs> um, so I always had this uh, interest in animals and I wanted to be a psychologist. So I came to the Netherlands to study. I did my bachelor here and then I did my master's here. and. During my master's, I was thinking, what is it that I want to do? And I, I just find the, the, the notion that dogs can help people just fascinating. The fact that just an, an animal can form such a bond with a person as to support them while they walk and call for help, for example, it just blows my mind. So I, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to work with people and with dogs. Uh, and it just so happened that uh, two professors of mine were doing a thesis on this subject. Uh, and it was about Parkinson's disease, how dogs help par in Parkinson's disease. Uh, and I didn't really know much about um, dogs for Parkinson's. I knew mostly, you know, what is most common, like uh, seeing eye dogs or uh, dogs like um, search and rescue. That's what I knew. So. Uh, when I saw it, I was immediately like, this is for me. Uh, so I went to talk about it with them and they said, well, there is a cat. Uh, there's no literature on this. Uh, there's no literature specifically on Parkinson's disease. Uh, and I said, okay, so what do we do? Because I was supposed to write the literature review. Um, and they said, well, this is what we are thinking. You're going to say, what is Parkinson's disease? This is motor symptoms and non-motor symptoms. And uh, we're gonna break it down into the symptoms, for example, depression, anxiety, apathy, pain, all these things, break it down and then see how do, how do service dogs or in general um, dogs that are going to hospitals, any kind of dog that doesn't have to be a specific service dog, how, does this, how do they help with uh, anxiety? What, what do we know from the literature? What do we know about depression? What do we know about motor symptoms? Um, and then you're gonna find all this information they told me, and then you, you will see, um, how does this correlate for Parkinson's? How can we start a conversation about Parkinson's? Uh, so that's what I did. And uh, that's how I also found the Davis Finney Foundation uh, through my research. And yeah, that's how I got into it. Oh, oops, I was, I was muted. So great. Yeah. So what, um, what were some of the things that you found through the, through the research? Um, so I have also my notes here. Um, so the, the only thing that I found specifically for Parkinson's and service dogs was a, a scientific uh, study about a specific woman who was 28 years old and she had a severe Parkinson's an early onset. Sorry if you can hear my dogs in the background. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, so she had uh, severe psychological and motor symptoms. Uh, this is a paper from 2010. And uh, she was uh, given anti-Parkinsonian and anti-depression medicine. Uh, but uh, and she was also suffering from apathetic depression. And she was also, on top of that, intolerant to dopamine medication. So she was deteriorate, deteriorating really fast. Eventually they had to start her on an apomorphic pump because her symptoms were so agonizing and she had severe dyskinesia and dystonia and uh, tremor. Uh, and she had a constant, constant feeling of nausea, so she could not really eat, uh, she was fatigued, uh, it was in general a bad situation, and they were considering uh, deep brain stimulation. Uh, so half a year after the apomorphine started, a friend of hers gave her a, a Highland Terrier puppy. 
So um, the patient suddenly had the responsibility of owning the, uh, a dog and that motivated her to exercise regularly. Uh, and they saw a significant improvement uh, on her walking and non-motor symptoms, uh, especially also her appetite. Um, and even though the depression persisted, um, the, the fact that the, the puppy was such a companionship and such a distraction, uh, it allowed the patient to uh, socialize and to even stop using the apomorphin pump. Oh. Uh, so the, the researchers uh, hypothesized that the symptoms improved because of the increase in daily exercise, uh, which was because of the dog. Um, another thing that has also been found or has been suggested is that the dog can uh, interrupt the resting tremor in PD uh, by stroking the dog and possibly by providing visual cues, uh, it can reduce propulsive gait. So that's, these are some ideas that have been put forth. Um, so the authors of this paper with, uh, with a Parkinson's disease patient uh, said that uh, the pharmacological uh, interventions have been widely researched, but lifestyle interventions have not had such a, a broad scrutiny as the, the medicines. Um, and the available literature discussing the effects of service dogs or animal assisted interventions in general is very, very sparse. So, um, yeah, I think that's a problem that needs to be addressed. Right. Uh, so why did, why did her friend get her the dog? Was the friend aware that like, was she was hoping to get it to her for therapy reasons or she was just like, Hey, you should get a dog. I'm going to give you a dog. Yeah. That's a strange thing because uh, you would think that a, a person who has such severe symptoms would not be an ideal candidate in the mind of a friend to have a puppy, especially right. because puppies are <laughs> also difficult. Right. Um, it was brilliant. It was a brilliant idea. Yeah, it was a great idea. <laughs> but um, yeah, there have been po many potential mechanisms in which they, oh, my dog is just so annoying. I don't even, you, you don't understand how much I love it. I, I, love, <laughs> I love hearing the dog. It's totally fine. <laughs> Okay, so there, there have been many potential mechanisms behind why uh, animals at large and dogs uh, help people. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, it's understood that the, the innate inbuilt characteristics of animals uh, can help the therapeutic process and that they are beneficial to people simply by being with them and just acting natural around them and just allowing the possibility to interact with them. Just that already helps. Um, there's a, a hypothesis called the biophilia hypothesis uh, that, was, uh, that was said by Wilson in 1984. Um, it says that humans are naturally predisposed to being attracted by other living beings. Uh, and this is based on the premise that uh, paying attention to your environment and the ecosystemic cues helps with survival. Mm. If, if so, the more aware you are of what's going on around you, the more chances you have of surviving in the wild. Um, another, another hypothesis, another theory is the learning theory, uh, which says that enjoyable behaviors are self-reinforcing and um, the repetition of, of these behaviors in the future is uh, consequently encouraged. Um, whereas the undesirable behaviors and displeasing activities are promoting avoidance and removal of oneself from the situation. So in the context of therapy, um, a stressful situation can occur when for example, uh, a patient with PD has to talk about some issues with a therapist that are uncomfortable, like uh, sexual dysfunction or constipation, for example. Um, and having a dog next to you can help you feel safe and more open 
to talking about these things with your therapist, which can facilitate the therapeutic process, for example. Wow, that is interesting. I would never have thought that a dog would be used in that way. I mean, I, I can understand a lot of the, you know, walking and helping, you know, around the house doing those mm -hmm. kinds of things, but that hadn't occurred to me. That's super interesting. Yeah, because uh, it's also, a, a dog can be as a, an external thing to concentrate on or start a conversation, for example, with even with the therapeutic con uh, in the therapeutic context, and when you feel a bit awkward about starting a conversation, you can always talk about the dog in the beginning, and then just open up. People immediately start talking about the dogs. It's, you know, um, right. We love talking about our dogs, right? And I mean, how many people have you met just because you have a dog? Right? Yeah, that's right. Who wants to come up and pet your dog or say hello to your dog and. Um, socially, for sure, that's a great thing for people with Parkinson's, right? I mean, it's great for all of us, but especially yeah. for, for people with Parkinson's. Um, so where are you in the research process right now? Um, what is your focus? Um, so right now, I'm, I have finished this research. I have done the whole literature review. Um, and what I saw is there's this lack of scientific uh, literature. and. What is interesting to me is that I've talked to a few people who do have Parkinson's disease and have an interest in dogs or do have service dogs. And they're always saying, my dog is so helpful. I, we can do so many things and so many positive things. But where is the literature on this? So what I want to do is I want to do a study in which we actually see and compare people who have Parkinson's disease with, uh, without any dogs, uh, people who have pet dogs, and people who have service dogs, because this is very different. Um, is it just the dog as an idea that helps, or is it just, or is it that a service dog that is trained to do things and is not gonna pull, you're not gonna fly on the walk if they see another dog? Um, yeah, I, I believe, of course, that the pet dog is different than the service dog. And yes, they are both companions. They're both uh, great to have, but the service dog is, I think, uh, a really much um, safer option, let's say, mm -hmm. for people who have mobility and balance issues. You, you can trust that you're not going to fall, for example. Right. Yeah, so I think, you know, part of it is, if you if you have a dog and and you've trained your dog and your dog is great it has the potential to help with parkinson's mm -hmm. in lots of ways you are forced to get out every day multiple times a day right to move yeah. to get out in the sun to um that kind of thing to socialize but if you and, and that can help with a lot of the i would say probably more than non-motor symptoms right of like depression and anxiety it's going to help you um kind of get out there a little bit more mm -hmm. but if you don't have a dog and you've never had a dog then just getting a dog can be a big challenge and so yeah. um, a trained dog uh, a trained service dog is certainly um, the ideal one of the issues that you know, I hear all the time from our community is they really want a service dog. They, they have to wait years and years to get a service dog or uh, to get the dog and then have the dog trained is just an exorbitant amount of money yeah. so they can't afford it. And the, the fact that there's no research, you know, not a lot of research is not helping the cause, right? right. Because if there was a scientific evidence that this was a really great thing, people would probably invest more. They'd be willing to wait more, you know, more. Yeah. But like right now, it's just a frustration. And so yeah. you're, the first part of your next sort of iteration of this uh, project is the survey, right? Yes, uh, I've been, uh, I created a survey uh, it's a preliminary survey because I wanted to get some information about uh, this project, but it's nothing uh, official yet. So it's for me to say, okay, I found this. Uh, can we work and build on it and do research on it? Is this really true? Um, yes, this is what I want to do because right now I actually don't have any 
participants with service dogs. So it's either participants with pet dogs or no dogs, mm. uh, which is still interesting because you can still see the difference between a dog and no dog. But but what I really want to see is a service dog. Right. Great. Okay. Well, we're definitely going to share that uh, survey link. And so that I know we have a huge community of people that are interested in this. And we definitely have a lot that have their own service dogs. Uh, we've met them, they come to our events, they're part of our little family, and uh, we love them very much. Yeah. So uh, I hope that I hope that you're able to to move forward on this. Anything Perfect. else that you want to share that I haven't asked about that is uh, super interesting around this topic for you? Um about maybe about the exercise part i uh, i also did the, the research on my thesis on that and uh the research showed that uh people who actually have dogs uh exercise a bit less than people with no dogs really? and when they looked into that it was because it depends on the dog it apparently the dog can be a hindrance uh, so if you have an older dog or a dog that doesn't like to walk, uh, then the person also is not motivated. We're not talking about Parkinson's patients specifically now. But um, what I think is that the service dogs are usually higher energy dogs because they're working dogs. So they're not going to not want to go out. Um, and the research also found that the more you have motivation to go outside, the more you will go outside. So if the dog is actually helping you uh, not be scared of falling or calling for help, and if the dog wants to go outside, then I think this will definitely show different results than what the, the other research showed. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to uh, say no to a dog that's like scratching at the door. Like we need yes. to get outside. Right. Um, so you, yeah, you want to make sure that it's a safe, a safe dog uh, mm -hmm. that's going to take you out. Well, that's, that's fascinating. Yeah. That's um, yeah. And um, yeah, I can talk about some of the, the studies that I found that I thought were interesting, for example, about anxiety and depression. Um, I found a study on uh, deaf and hard of hearing participants. Um, they were given uh, service dogs that were hearing hearing dogs. Uh, and what they did is that they took measurements before they got the dogs and after. And they noticed that uh, depression was much improved after the participants got the dogs. And also so did the anxiety. And one could say that okay, if you get a dog, uh, you are happy, so the depression goes down. But uh, they, did, they, they took measurements for two years after. So the, there was a long lasting um, effect on the depression and anxiety. So it was not just uh, having a new dog that helped. Right. I thought that was interesting. Um, there was another study on pain. Uh, people who had done uh, um, a surgery and they um, measured how much pain medication they used after the surgery and how many days they stayed at the hospital. Uh, one hospital used service dogs and the other one didn't use service dogs. Uh, and they would go and visit the patients and sit with them for 15 minutes and then leave again. And so in hospital A, was a service dog, let's say, and hospital B was not. And they saw that in hospital A, they stayed less days at the hospital after surgery, which was the same surgery. And it was the same, uh, they did, they matched the participants. So it was, let's say a male 64 years old with a male 64 years old. So it wasn't different. Mm -hmm. uh, they used less pain medication and they used, they were less days at the hospital. So there might be some economic benefit from having service dogs also. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's very cool. That's great. Um, well, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us and I hope that we can stay in touch as you yes. move along with your research and uh, we can get people participating and learning about it. And hopefully, I mean, if I had my way, everybody would have a 
service dog with Parkinson's. Yes, me too. <laughs> so maybe that can be our, our mission. Um, yeah. I, uh, I love it. I love it. So uh, thank you, Lisa, so much. And uh, we will be in touch. Yes, sure.